and then it closed back below where it opened, which told you wanted to come right back out of it. And I'll have to figure out which thing that was. So on the so if the market is heading down, there's two. What were you doing, Jim? Sleeping? On a Zoom, okay. So here's another pattern setup. There's your bearish J hook pattern setting up, implying, again, implying that's a lap. There you go. Implying that wave three is going to take you down further. Again, this is because of the visual analysis that we can apply to a chart that says if this is wave three, it's going to be the same magnitude as this. What's it tell us about our support area? More than likely, that support area is not going to act as support, so we can recognize the start of wave three because of the pattern. Everybody else is getting out because it's breaking the last support level, and uh, that's where the strong selling might start stepping in. That's all right. No, no worry. Uh, kind of the same scenario on uh, sleep number. Got a bearish J hook pattern. If wave three starts, we can see pretty much where uh, or what would confirm that. If they open this lower, telling us the 50 is not acting as support, now we can kind of anticipate we might be heading down into this range. Now, where it goes is kind of conjecture. Wave one, wave two, wave three down here somewhere. But if we know that that move is likely, it's not really uh, that critical of where it's heading to. Once it's down here, now we have the uh, ability to see what type of signal might be occurring down here somewhere to tell us that, that was the end of the downtrend. And you can see on rhythm how it's kind of failed up here with, there's your evening star very scoop type pattern. And that's what usually causes a slingshot effect to the downside. So you want to keep an eye on that one as far as a potential short, especially if the market opens weak and this one opens weaker tomorrow. So. What we're kind of looking for is the big potential moves. Notice right here. Whoops, right here, right here. What happened? There we go. Right about in here. You can see the slow curve. And if it was breaking down through the 50 with further selling, this is our expectation coming out of that slow curve uh, price move. Here, slow curve price move. You could probably still be shorting this one if it opens lower tomorrow, giving you a bearish doji sandwich, which would imply more downside. Whoops, I had a bunch of those. Let me do this one. This is wave one, wave two. Look at your evening star signal. High probability wave three of this magnitude taking you down into this range. Uh, Bill, yeah, but that's another case, too, where, remember, uh, I think we used $8 as our entry point. It opened up a little bit. But again, we have the advantage to see exactly what's happening as that candle progresses. They opened it. They weren't buying. They weren't buying. All right, let's hold off. They weren't buying. They weren't buying. Well, obviously, it was not time to buy. 
and you can do get a much more clear indication on the 10 minute chart where it opens and you see it start trading off the first of all the rationale should be well the market's trading lower so let's hold off for a little bit and this is trading lower so let's hold off a little bit so if it opened here started trading down where would you be buying if they turn around and came up through the open why would you do that because the whole implication in the first place was got some buy signals that backed off and then came up it was doing what it's supposed to be doing based upon the daily chart so uh, whoops what should I add here 80 TN. ADTN. There's that slow curve. And it, when it broke down, well, when it broke down, you could tell where it broke down. They gapped down from the doji. And as that was happening, what could we assume? We could assume there's kind of a dumpling top, slow curve, whatever you want to call it. And that's what we're looking for coming out of that dumpling top, that big price move. Big price move, close where? Right smack dab on the next target down here at the, uh, at the 200, which is, again, going back to this one, slow curve, big breakdown, AMLX. On here and OSUR. Oh, so I've got this one on here. It looks like we're starting to get that same action. Man, I don't know why I have that one here, because you can't short it. Or I don't think you can short it. And RGNX, you can see what's happening here. And look where it broke through today. This one. Even though you're in the oversold area, remember where a fry pan bottom usually will break out when it's up in the overbought condition. Where do you think a dumpling top will break down when it's already in the oversold area? So this type of chart pattern, oh no, has the prospect of, say, coming back down into this area. But remember what this is doing. It's telling you. The investor sentiment has kind of getting weaker, getting weaker, getting weaker. And then at this point, everybody says, get me out of this bad stock. And that's where they start dropping uh, like a rock. Another one. Dumpling top type scenario. Couldn't hold the 50. Where could be the next target? Back down in this area. I say could be. First of all, the probabilities are it's heading in this direction. Then now you can start picking out where the targets might be. Will they get there? Who knows? That's where the targets are. But at least you know it's probably heading in that direction. Another one. PH. If it comes down through the 50, which would also be coinciding with this level, you've got a lot of running room to the downside. I think that's about all I've got for tonight. I would definitely be watching to short urine. I'm sorry, going long on urine because of the J-hook type pattern, but also getting ready to go short if the market is showing weakness on things that are giving us high probabilities of heading in the downward direction, but it hasn't moved yet. Uh, obviously, we don't want to be buying stuff, or we're less likely to want to be buying stuff that has already had uh, uh, big downside moves. But at this point, if we should have been shorting up here, down here we're 
want to be in the holding stages. Okay, so right now, obviously, there is no investor sentiment coming into this market. Let's take a gander here. Oops, in the uh, futures are down another 182 after hours. Look at that little slow curve. So it doesn't matter where the patterns are, whether they're on a 10-minute chart, a daily chart, a monthly chart, it's still revealing the same information. Okay, and then uh, let's take a quick gander here at crude oil. You can see where crude oil is. It's kind of hovering in here, which puts, puts it in about the $86 range. Now we want to see if it's range bound or if it's ready to come down through this level. All right, so are there any general questions on candlesticks? Whoops, I was supposed to do this. There, oops. Remember, we're going to be doing a just a mini training on Saturday. Hold on for a moment. So we try to keep these relatively inexpensive. And I don't know whether I can pull the I don't know whether I can pop this in here or not. All right. So the reason these are good is because we can concentrate on a specific, oh, let's say a specific topic. We're going to go supposedly for an hour, figure on an hour and a half to two hours. But once you see that topic, that session will be recorded, yes. Once you see that topic, now you have a little bit more mental uh, oh, let's see, mental, what am I thinking of? Pinpointing of what you want to be looking for Oh, mercy. What one? There was one that was, if it opened lower, it was going to do a bearish doji sandwich. Can't remember. All right. I'll, I'll have well, I'll think of it while we're doing the live charts. Maybe it was this one. No, God, can't think of it. Okay. Any general questions on candlesticks? Again, the comforting aspect is knowing that if the market's heading down and you're finding things that have not only a downtrend movement to it, but a strong downtrend movement, now your thinking or your uh, decision making gets very uh, simple. You're going to stay short in this until you see the markets might be turning around. Oh, magic, magic, magic. Don't you know your bearish signals? Have we? Magic. What ones have we been looking at tonight that told you things were setting up for uh, for these type of 
setups. Now I got to remember I should have put a Uh, something like this that's not too far uh, but we don't know if the market is down so much so what's your best prospect oh there it is what's your best prospect knowing what patterns they're setting up what is your what are your better trade prospects coming off a pattern. So here's a dumpling top. We recommended this yesterday. I'll probably re-recommend this because if this opens lower tomorrow, what's your 2 plus 2 analysis telling you? More than likely, you've got a bearish doji sandwich, which means it's going to be a good, strong down move. And what's that tell you about your pattern? That your dumpling top is producing that good strong downtrend you'd be that much more uh, uh, emphasis on the fact that there's uh, something that has strong prospects of heading lower even though the markets are already in in down or in a well in the oversold area same thing with the strong sell signal for example, look what started the downtrend on Peloton. There's your bearish kicker signal, which I know you can't make any money with those, Magic. But what is this? What's the relevance of this chart right now? Look where it closed, right in that range. If this opens lower tomorrow, what can we analyze on this uh, chart? Wave one, wave two, wave three, and if wave three is the same as wave one, what's it tell us about this level? It's not going to hold that level. If it doesn't hold that level, you start shorting it on weakness, what is everybody else watching after that? They aren't watching what pattern is it, or candlestick pattern. They're watching to see if it's going to hold this support level. And when they see it's not holding that support level, what do they do? They start bailing out. A day, yeah, a dagwood is, but right now, haven't been able to find any dagwoods. So, the dumpling tops are your uh, your best uh, prospects. Coco, I thought Coco finished up down here. Yes, they closed down here, I think. Is that still on the chart? Which means it closed right here. So if this opens lower tomorrow, what do you got going on? A Barry Stoji sandwich? Where do you think the next target's likely to be? Down here. And that's all based on, got a Barry signal, evening star signal, failure at the same level, closed below the T-line, rolling over, now, if it finished as a doji today and opens lower, still a good, good probability we're heading lower. So, magic, magic, are you toying with us? What is a Dagwood? What, what creates a Dagwood? Sometimes inverting a bearish chart helps us see the pattern. Sometimes inverting the bearish charts help us see the pattern better. No, a bearish doji sandwich isn't a Dagwood. A bearish doji sandwich is a bearish doji sandwich. 
an evening star, Vincent is saying, an evening star followed by a doji sandwich is an evening sandwich. A doji sandwich is just a doji sandwich. But the prospects of a doji sandwich has the fact that if it opens lower, it's likely going to trade lower and create a doji sandwich in the sense that that candle right there will be the same as this candle right here. Uh, Milton, I don't know how to flip the chart upside down. But all you can really visualize is look at the big rounding curve. Can't remember which ones had the big. No, which ones had the big fry pan bottom for that? Now, kind of, there's your fry pan bottom, which is that opposite direction curvature. Okay. Oh, that's why we give them weird names, Magic, so that you will remember them. So if you remember what a McMuffin is, that's a morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich or your morning sandwich, that's a McMuffin. A Dagwood is your evening star signal followed by a doji sandwich or your evening sandwich. Now, how can that be hard to remember? Okay, I guess with that, Jim, let's go ahead and do the double line. And in 3.6 seconds, do the next double line. Okay, let me scroll back up. ACN, Jimmy, I would just stay short. And here's another case where if it opens lower, we'll get another doji sandwich, implying there's more downside. Now, on the other hand, you're in the oversold area. I, if I was short, I'd keep a safety stop at today's high because if it bounces up from here, where do you think it's heading to? At least back up to test the T-line. From the oversold area, you might, might uh, take some profits. IMGN, there's your kind of doji sandwich. If you're short, you stay short on this one. Next target on ASML, hard to say. Likely it's here. There's a wee little teeny gap right there. Remember, everybody always says, well, doesn't, don't gaps get filled? Yes, they may not get filled during this move. They might get filled during this move because they become kind of an inherent target. So here's another situation where I would stay short, but I'd put a safety stop just above today's I. And PLTR, there's nothing there. You just stay short. Look at your bearish J-hook pattern that failed the 50. Another pop back up failure. All you can do right now is stay short on that one. Uh, you don't know, but what this does, Walter, is says there's something new here. So obviously, it's been a dull trader for months. 
now something's happened. This becomes the visual alert to say, where do I want to have my money? I want to have my money in something that's going to have some activity. Let's go back and see what the news was on this that caused this move. Now, what happened after our profit taking? Again, look at your, your where the selling started. Kind of your bearish harami in the overbought condition on your 10-minute chart that far away from the T-line. So if you were trading this, if you bought it here or here or here, at least now you can see where the likelihood to take profits was occurring. So once again, an illustration that the, the uh, oh, The time frame doesn't matter. Something happened on this. Let's say you did see it at this level. Or basically, whoops, say at this level. Or even this level, where it was breaking out. At least you knew how long to stay in and when to come back out. Uh, Jorge, this one does not have as strong an implication of a breakout. More than likely, it's going to head higher, but you can see there is no signal here. So it's likely to head higher, but anytime you see something starting without a signal, that gives you a little bit more inclination to say, all right, if I see something where there's some selling, it's, I'm going to come out pretty quick because the, uh, it doesn't have the same uh, prospects of a strong move as you would see in a, a candle that had a strong uh, signal. This is more likely. You can see you had a little hammer doji, gap up doji, break out through this level, off the 50. That's more compelling that the bulls are definitely taking control. Lithium held up today. Another one you could get ready to buy. On it's almost looking like it's doing kind of a, well, not so much, but well, it's kind of a flutter ticker signal. Notice where they opened this one. They gapped it up uh, today. Black, nothing there. PLL, that one has a little bit of compelling uh, indication that it could start being bought, but it didn't sell off with any great enthusiasm today. Oops, didn't scroll. Nally? Oops, that's not a good sign. Did they uh, do something with uh, dividends? Now, that's not good. Where they gap it up and come right back down into the into the trading area. Uh, I know it pays a good dividend yield, but it better open positive tomorrow and trade positive. Net, you just stay short if you're short. Now, Obviously, you have a doji sitting in the oversold area right smack dab on the 50. I'd have a safety stop right now at today's high. They should be opening it and trading lower if you want to stay short. If it opens positive and starts trading positive, that's a good indication. That's where everybody has decided either to cover their short position or start buying. SG, nothing great on this one. Don't really have a signal here yet. I wouldn't be doing anything with this one yet. An ATKR, nothing here other than you want to stay short on this one if you're short. Pass, stay short. 
long as you're below the tee line. SMCI, yep, that one stays short or you can be shorting it. Now remember, this one wasn't a signal. That's just, but if you'd been long, that's where your safety stop would have gotten you out of the trade. You wouldn't be going short just yet. However, notice what it did after that. There's your berry doji sandwich. That becomes a signal. That tells you you're inclined to go short. I forgot what I said, Matt. Just Snow, evening star signal, right now you just stay short. Oh, buying puts, yeah, you could still buy puts on this one. Obviously, you want to watch to see what happens here at the 50. If it breaks through the 50, though, whoops. Eh, yeah, you could come back. That 50 would be your first target. Oh, I remember which one it is now. Lucid, you just stay short. NVAX, you just stay short. We have a bunch that were short right now. Magna, again, when they start gapping down, and then you can start seeing the patterns, the various J hook, you start projecting where the next target might be to see if it's worthwhile, I would suspect your next target is down in this ring, bottom of this channel. Which one? I? Whoops, I had it. I had it. Ah, ah no, getting closer. Uh, oh, Rivian. There. Okay, so here is one that started out of the shoot today like a gangbuster. But now, hold back to where it was relatively indecisive. So if you're going long on this, what do you need to see? You need to see that the profit taking is over and they're still buying. Lulu, oh, that's, uh, there's your message. The message was, they gap this up after a doji, telling you somebody is wanting this real, I'll say, real enthusiastically. But then there's profit taking. What this tell you? Profit taking's over. That enthusiasm is likely to start uh, coming back in. So wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one based on the probabilities that whatever gapped it up. And they've finished the profit taking. Now the buying, that gap up buying is in place. Dix, you could short this one. It's just not a real enthusiastic uh, chart to the downside. But you could short it. Obviously, you want to watch to see what happens once it comes back to the 200. Shopify, another one where you just stay short, wouldn't necessarily be going short here, but you can stay short. SE, that same scenario. Wouldn't short it here, but I'd stay short. Squirm, that's not a real pretty chart. It gapped up and pulled back. Now, the difference between a message and kind of a belt hold is a message usually won't come back into this range, whereas a belt hold would. So that one, if you were long and it opens lower tomorrow, starts trading lower, close it out. It becomes a nothing chart. Rhythm, you could do a bear put spread, yes.
maybe uh, no. Hold on, Magic. We'll look at the put spread. There's two elements to the put spread. Again, let's see. A uh, check. Oh, that's a, a, a Chinese bear fund. What would be the Chinese bull fund? Okay, there's two elements that you have to be aware of. Whoops, I may have closed this out. I did. First, obviously, you want to find a chart that's heading in the right direction. Secondly, if I see a chart that looks good for a put or a put spread, you want to make sure that there's enough volume in the uh, stock price that will warrant a lot of volume in the, uh, the calls and puts. Because uh, trying to do a spread, you have a deterrent, which is if you don't have a lot of volume on the two sides that you're trying to trade, and the the uh, yang, okay, I'll go back to it. Uh, so we're looking at uh, we're looking at this one today. I don't know whether you can see this, but uh, it was S S B L K. Try to do a put spread. But notice that if you did a 2015, look at the volume on the 15s. Absolutely nothing. So the mechanics of, if you were doing kind of a 2015, well, you might be able to, to uh, buy the 20 puts, but there might not be anything to buy down here to do your other side of the spread. So that makes it... Uh, makes it where you don't want to do it. So what you have to do is find some numbers on here where the uh, uh, both sides of what you want to do have a good volume. So, uh-oh. No, find this symbol. That's for the did type it correctly. Okay, so here is the... Uh, volume on our YTM and it's not very big at all which means not only would you probably have difficulty getting to the puts outright you definitely could not coordinate to get to a put spread so that those are the deterrents of, of a spread you need to have volume on both both sides so that's your yang so you've got the opportunity either short, go short on the yin, or going long on the yang. DWAC, I guess from what Marsha was saying today, again, you were in a downtrend. They took it down, and I guess there's a deadline where they have to buy the company or everything disappears. So if you're short, you stay short, but you're probably going to have a lot of movement one way or the other based upon what the news is as far as what they have to do. I forget how many days. This one, nothing. I mean, there's nothing, uh, oh, was that G-P-H-X? Yes. Now this one. Is, oh, this is the one I was going to give an example today, where you had the uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. So as long as you had this uptrend, where was your safety stop? It should have been below the T-line. Because logic says, especially after a long-legged doji, if they're heading in this direction, they've reversed. Now you could probably short it, likely to come back to this level. And I had another one. Darn it. I had another one where it stayed up for quite a while. Ah, I gotta remember to write it down. 
Oh, okay, that was it. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, so now you've got things that are going to affect uh, DWAC that has nothing to do with investor sentiment. It's going to be the reaction to whatever the decisions are. Okay, so after hours, the Dow is down another 175 points. Now, remember, that doesn't mean a hill of beans right now. It's, uh, it's what it's doing when, when the market's open tomorrow. Okay, I guess that's about it. We will see everybody bright and early tomorrow morning. If you didn't short CDMO, get ready to short this one tomorrow on a lower open. That doji sandwich confirming your dumpling top high probability trade. All right, everybody, have a good evening. Uh, we usually start at 10. We're supposed to quit at 11. Usually it's around noontime. If you haven't, or if you have a chance to take it, we're going to see things in it, or at least kind of uh, confirm what you already know, but identify much more quickly in your mind, or have it reprocessed in your mind over and over of what you want to be looking for to get the big strong trades, either bullish or bearish. All right, everybody, we'll see you in the morning.